and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, as we get to the middle of the cropping season, or maybe it's the end of the cropping season for you, you might think, oh, I'm pretty home free. But you know what? There are still a lot of insects that can affect corn, soybeans, wheat, and other crops this year. We're going to talk about some of those today. Well, speaking of soybeans, once we get into the reproductive phases where you're seeing flowers out there, pod development begins, that's where a lot of stress is on that plant and things start to show up, like problems that begin really early in the year. Sudden death syndrome is one that you should be watching for. Well, we've got a Weed of the Week, as always, coming up later in the show. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about the corn reproductive stages and especially the ear development on corn. It all starts when you see the tassel. Now, when the tassel comes out on the corn plant, many people think that's the first reproductive phase of that corn plant's life. Actually, it's the final vegetative stage. So we call it VT or vegetative stage tassel. Now, when the silk comes out on the ear, that's really technically when the reproductive phases start. So uh, that would be R1. Although, actually that ear of corn is starting to develop when the corn plant is really small, like probably two to four inches tall, that's it. And then inside that plant, the ear is starting. Okay, okay, well, sure. Uh, as soon as that seed germinates, Brian, there's lots of stuff going on. But, you know, all, all the way until this point, we've been looking at a lot of leaves on the corn plant and, and not too much excitement. But now here's really where uh, things get critical. You've got that tassel out. It's exposed. Uh, if you had some hail, if you had some green snap, these types of things, your corn plant could be in a, in a whole lot of trouble. Once we see the silks come out the end of the ear, here's where it's a really interesting stage to talk about corn development with kids, for example, because you see all these silks come out on the ear. And you may ask a, a young person, well, how many silks are there? Well, I don't know, boy, that's a lot to count, isn't there? Well, there are exactly as many silks as there are going to be kernels or potential kernels on that ear. You see, there's one silk that's going to lead to each kernel. So what ends up happening is that silk is sticking out the end of the ear and it's going to get fertilized by the pollen coming off the tassel. Once it gets fertilized, then it basically is sending a signal and is sending that down all the way to that kernel. Once the kernel is properly fertilized, then the silk detaches from the kernel. So the silk's going to be green in advance. Once it detaches itself from the plant, well, now it's obviously going to die. So once it detaches, then eventually it's going to become brown. I think it's pretty interesting to note too with that silk, because sometimes you'll, you may be thinking, well, where does that pollen have to land? Does it have to land right on the end of the silk? Is it like a straw that it has to move down? No, it can actually land anywhere along that silk, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But with the silking on corn plants, some corn ears you'll see really long silks hanging off, others will have really short silks. Now, if you've got a, a hybrid that has a long silk on it, that's generally thought to be pretty good because you've got a better shot of that particular silk being fertilized, of every particular silk being fertilized. What can happen and what farmers really are concerned about at this stage is if there are insects, like corn rootworm beetles, for example. They emerge from the soil about at this time of year, and they like to feed on those silks because they're juicy and tender Evidently, they must be tasty, so they'll try and chew those right off. And if they mow them down right to the end of the husk and there's no silk hanging out, sometimes you can have it where the ear does not get pollinated at all and you don't have any kernels that develop. But the good news is there are trillions of pieces of pollen that are floating around a cornfield normally. So generally speaking, most of the silks get fertilized and that means that you're going to end up with good kernels on every ear. Sometimes ear development on a corn plant may be a little bit of a mystery, just like the mystery that is our Weed of the Week. Is it a Christmas tree? No, it's not, but we'll tell you what it is coming up later in the show. Looking to maximize your yield potential? Monsanto BioAg can help with microbial seed applied solutions. 
Available for a wide variety of crops, they contain hard-working microbes that help your plants access key nutrients, enhance their root and shoot growth, and help them better withstand stress all season long, all of which add up to a higher yield potential for you. See how microbes can help you at MonsantoBioAg.com slash 500 trillion. One of the biggest yield limiting factors on farms is even crop emergence. And only one closing wheel will get your growing season started right. Furrow Cruiser spiked closing wheels from Copperhead Ag are proven to yield better than standard rubber tire and cast iron closing wheels in all conditions. With yield gains that give you a return on investment the first season, there's no reason to run a standard closing system again. Visit CopperheadAG.com today to get your 2017 growing season started right. Ideal for herbicide applications, the Ultra Low Drift's large air inducted droplets were designed to eliminate driftable fines without sacrificing coverage. Its thick three-dimensional pattern creates multiple angles for the spray to cover the target. Hypro, helping you spray better. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma. But Wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources, the research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. Sure K is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Over the last 10 years in the United States, we've seen a lot of different diseases and insects show up in soybeans. And I think one of the worst ones you can possibly have in terms of a disease is sudden death syndrome. So we'll talk about how to stop that or at least how to reduce the problems of sudden death syndrome today. Well with many problems that we face on the farm we see something out there, we have a treatment option or uh, a farming technique that we can utilize, we go out and we fix the problem. With sudden death syndrome in soybeans there really isn't a fix. Once you're seeing visual symptomology in your field you just kind of have to let it play out. So that's really a tough thing to deal with on the farm. So where does it really get started? Sudden death syndrome, as, as many of you well know, starts with a fusarium infection uh, and an infection often happens within 48 hours, 72 hours of when that seed was dropped in the ground. So you think about it, wow, I gotta have some protection right on my seed to begin with. Yes, it does, it does help to have a treatment on the seed and there's some good options. A Levo would be one that comes to mind uh, that's been shown to give some benefit when you have sudden death syndrome out there. But dealing with that cold, wet soil could be an even bigger thing. Well, the thing I always talk to people about, as soon as they say, I've got sudden death syndrome, I say, how much tile do you have in the ground? you've got to get your drainage problem fixed. Yes, we also want to reduce our compaction issues. So if you have less compaction, you typically have less sudden death because you have a much bigger root system. But you really want to improve drainage in your soil. So if you've had a sudden death syndrome or if there's sudden death in your area, really work on, in the future, having better drainage. That means more tile. All right, well, sudden death syndrome has been around long enough that the, the soybean breeders have started to address it. We see some major differences in tolerance levels to sudden death syndrome between varieties at all maturities that are planted right now in our country. Now, like everything, when you're picking for disease tolerance, you want to make sure that you're getting that disease tolerance, but also getting very high yielding genetics. And many of the soybean varieties on the market today would be able to have both those characteristics that not only are they good on sudden death, they're great on yield. All right, Darren mentioned Olivo. The other product that has some activity on sudden death is Mertec. Now, typically what Syngenta is doing is selling their Clariva Complete together with Mertec. The Clariva is for cis nematode. And what they found is, boy, if we have some cis nematode control 
and we have sudden death syndrome control, then you're going to have that much more yield. With Olivo, at least that does have some cyst nematode control as well as sudden death syndrome control. With Bayer and their Olivo product, they're typically throwing that together with Votivo to add even more SCN control too. So anyway, you basically have two choices here. You've got this Clariva Complete Mertex side, and then the other side is Olivo together with Votivo. All right, late in the season, once we start seeing the very first flowers in a soybean field, this is a time where you could provide some extra protection as well. Many farmers are putting on fungicides when we get to full bloom to first pod, R2 to R3. But at R1, when you just see those first blooms out there, you do have a chance for some suppression of sudden death syndrome with preemptor. Now, when we think about it, we get preemptor out there, we spray on right at R1, it's going to delay the onset of sudden death syndrome is what we've seen. So it's not necessarily, well, you're never gonna see sudden death in your field. That's not the case. But if it can push it off for another couple of weeks or more, your soybeans have a chance to start blooming, start developing pods, and hopefully get a little bit ahead of the disease. Because the later that disease hits your crop, the less impact it has. The last point I wanted to bring up here is, in terms of delayed planting, there are a lot of people talking about Boy, I should wait to plant because it seems like the later you plant, the less sudden death syndrome you have. And to some degree, yes, that's true. But the problem with that is when you delay planting, you also lower your yield because early planting typically yields more. So what we normally would suggest to you is plant your most tolerant varieties first and your fields that have less risk, less chance for sudden death syndrome, plant those first. But don't delay planting overall. Well, sudden death syndrome is a tough disease and soybeans start with a tolerant variety on your least problemsome <laughs> fields. Uh, then you can treat it with treatments such as Olivo, for example. Uh, at R1, you can use something like Preemptor and then make sure you get your drainage improved this fall. If you've got an issue out in your field, add some more tile lines in those areas to reduce that water log condition that you often see in the spring. Well, whether you have sudden death syndrome or not, you very well could have our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up later in the show. When there's work to be done on your farm, you can't afford to be grounded. Whether for repair or upgrade, you need quality new use and rebuild parts fast. Worthington Ag Parts has what you need, and our distribution network offers same-day service to much of the country. And with 15% off all parts ordered in July, now's a great time to get to know us. Worthington Ag Parts, providing quality parts at quality prices and adding value to your farm operations for over 50 years. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit MandicoAgri.com. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. So far, looking behind the machine, I'm thoroughly impressed with them. Compared to the older concaves we were running, we were finding about 40 grains, and we put these new ones in it, and it's hard to find one. After the break, I found out about these concaves. While we were down, we put these concaves in, and it was like a different machine. I'd say we probably saved three to five bushel to the acre. I probably tripled my money just by putting these in. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing.
Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. All right, our next topic today is late season insects. And let me just summarize this real quickly by telling you this. Don't spray if you don't see bugs, but if you see even a small number of bugs, you very well might be at an economic threshold because if you look at old research data from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, the problem with a lot of the research data that's out there today is they're looking at low commodity prices, which fortunately we have much higher prices today, and they're also looking at very high insecticide prices, and insecticides are at their cheapest level ever. Insecticides are dirt cheap. So what we're trying to tell you here is pull the trigger early, look at a proper economic threshold, regardless of the crop we're talking about. All right, Brian, here's the other side of that, though. You've got the dollars of, okay, here's what the bushel is worth, yep. and, and here's what the product is worth. Yep. But we don't know how much yield damage we're going to see from a certain bug. One year, it may be a 20 bushel hit. The next year, maybe two. And it's hard well, to know, I don't you know, know. depending on I, I don't how know. the health of that crop is. If you're getting lots of rain, for example, we don't have a big soybean cyst nematode issue, even where you get hot spots. Yeah, but you're not going to spray for cyst nematode. What you're going to spray for is something like soybean aphids, and that's based on number. In other words, I know that if I have 10 aphids in my field, I can probably justify spraying on my farm. If I have 10,000 aphids in my field, I'm going to have major yield loss, probably 30, 40 bushel yield loss. It's going to be unbelievable. So what I'm getting at here is it still amounts to the count of the bugs. If you only have a few, you're not going to have much yield loss. If you have very many, your yield loss is a lot higher. Okay, here's the other thing I hear from farmers. I'm going to harvest in just a few weeks. Yep. How much damage can they really do? Is it too right. late? Right, and that's the whole thing. If you have to make a separate trip just for insecticide, well, now your costs went up dramatically. So if it's yourself spraying, maybe it's 3 or $4. If you have to hire a plane, maybe it's 8 or $9. But the point is, it's a lot more than just the $1.50 or $2 insecticide. Okay, the other thing is, there, there are some guys spraying Liberty and... Oh, wait a second. The, the other key thing here is, you've got to look at pre-harvest interval. You asked me, oh, it's only a few weeks weeks until I have to harvest. Well, in some cases, that pre-harvest interval might be seven days, it might be 14, it might be 28 days. So that's something you've got to look at on the label of the product you're going to spray. Oftentimes we're seeing guys tank mix. So yep. they say, well, I'm spraying Extendamax or I'm spraying Well, you Roundup, have to look at what's I've labeled. Got great big droplets. Is that going to impact how my insecticide works? Well, first of all, it might not even be labeled. Make sure that whatever you're going to put in there is actually labeled. So like with Extendamax and Ingenia, that specific product has to be labeled or you can't spray it. With almost anything else we're talking about, so together with Roundup, together with a lot of other dicambas on corn, together with almost any wheat herbicide, yes, there's no problem throwing in an insecticide, especially a pyrethroid. Now, if you go Lors band, Lors band's a little hotter, so you have to worry a little bit about leaf burn, so just be a little careful there. You mentioned heating up the tank mix. What yep. about if it's really hot out to begin with? Well, I don't worry too much about heat, and I know some people really panic with the heat, but just make sure you've got your insecticide rate up, and usually I find that it works pretty well. All right, once insects are feeding on plants, they are open and exposed. They've got wounds on them. What about putting a fungicide with it? Yeah, a fungicide is a great idea if you're going to also spray insecticide. A lot of times we're seeing good returns because any time the plant gets opened up for disease, you're just obviously a lot more likely to have the disease, so it only makes sense that a fungicide would help. Okay, sometimes people are looking for bugs and they actually see mites. That's a little bit different. Yeah, a normal pyrethroid isn't going to work. So you can't go out there with Kendo or Silencer or something like that. You're going to have to switch over to a Bifenthrin or Capture type product or Lorsman isn't too bad either. But switching to Lorsman, some people say, well, it doesn't have as much residual as some of the pyrethroids. Is that a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. You're not going to have much residual, whatever you do. Yes, you might have a week to 10 days, maybe 14 days, but that's it. Well, some of the products Usually, claim you're going to have a month or a month and a half. No, and you're all not. This. You're not. You're not. Is that killing residual or what is no, that? No, there might be a little bit of stuff out there yet, but it's not going to actually kill anything. So I won't get too worried about it. Just go kill the insects that are there. That's what we're worried about. And again, I just encourage you, don't be spraying. Don't just throw it in because, oh, it's cheap if you see no bugs out there because then you're going to kill the beneficials and then you might flare up any problems that probably weren't going to happen before. Now you're going to have to go back and spray again. So scout your fields before you spray every single time, whether we're early in the season or late in the season. I don't care if we're talking corn, soybeans, wheat. There are some harmful insects that are still out there. So at least be scouting. One of the other things you'll be scouting for is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. 
The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Weed of the week is Russian thistle. And when we think about weeds uh, that we get out in the field, oftentimes we're worried about resistance. This is one that you hear sometimes about ALS resistance uh, because frankly, many of the ALS herbicides have been pretty effective controlling Russian thistle in the past. But fortunately, there are lots of options to control this weed. Yeah, but here's the tough thing, Darren. It doesn't have what we would call normal leaves. It kind of looks a little bit like a small Christmas tree. So how are you gonna stick herbicide on there, especially now that everybody wants to go with these great big droplets? A lot of people don't wanna run lots of water. They're not running much spray pressure. How much coverage are you actually going to get on there? That's generally speaking, my number one concern. With Russian thistle, it's typically one of the first weeds that you're gonna see in the spring. And even when you're out there early, this surfactant thing is gonna be a big deal because we've got cold conditions. We wanna try and penetrate whatever leaf tissue that we've got. Yeah, I get it. Russian thistle doesn't exactly have these big wide leaves or something to, to land herbicide on, but uh, it is important to have a good surfactant or an oil with most of the products that you're going to be spraying. Well, the other thing is just starting with a pre-emerge herbicide. So if I'm in corn, you can do a number of different products. Personally, I like Sharpen Down or that, that's found in Verdict, but you've got a bunch of other good ones too. Any, anything containing an HPPD is generally speaking going to help. In soybeans, I like our three pre's, a yellow, Metribuzin, and a PPO like Authority or Valor. And then in wheat, I'd go Sharpen. Yes, if it's not ALS resistant, then Prepare is not too bad, but if it is ALS resistant, that's why I like Sharpen. In terms of post-emerge herbicides, I'm most excited about the new Extend technology, where we have dicamba we can use right up to and after planting. Well, you, you say that, Darren, but Roundup is still really good in Roundup Ready crops. Otherwise, the dicamba products or an HPPD product in corn and in wheat, we prefer Husky. That's all time we have for our Wheat of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. For lower costs, higher production, Mandical Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. 
Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Will my spray work differently in the morning versus afternoon versus evening? The answer is, it can and often does. We'll explain how to manage that in today's Iron Talk. On our farm, we're looking for a day that isn't windy, has no chance of rain, it's sunny, it's warm, it has all the weeds actively growing, and of course, it falls right in the middle of the week. Now, how many of those days do you actually get on your farm? We probably get two or three of them each year, and after that, we're searching for just a few hours here or there that we can knock out some acres until the next couple hours of suitable weather. Wind seems to be one of those things that's certain to be a problem. Because of that, our operation, and likely yours as well, has been spraying many of the acres either in the early mornings or later in the evenings. There are a few challenges that you should watch out for. Today we'll talk about moisture. Moisture is critical, and I'm not just speaking about the chance of rain. You also have to look at dew. If the plants are all filled with dew in the morning, you need to wait to spray until the dew is burned off. Otherwise, adding more water droplets to those already wet leaves will just cause the moisture to run off, or if not, your spray solution will be diluted that much more. The other thing, especially in the evenings, is that spraying too late in the day may cause the spray droplets not to dry onto the leaf effectively, making your rain fast times much longer. In other words, if your product is safe from rain, let's say, two hours before a rain, but you spray it at 9 p.m. and the humidity comes up, perhaps a dew sets in, whatever the case, you may now have extended your time before the product is safe from rain until maybe even 10 a.m. the next morning. So check the forecast before spraying and be aware of any moisture that may impact your spray. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Before we wrap up today's show, I just want to invite you to do two things. Number one, attend the free Ag PhD Field Day that's coming up Thursday, July 27th. For more information, go to agphd.com. And number two, tune into the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us each weekday on Sirius XM Channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.